Though I'm missing
to those who were in need. In my heart, you'll always be a part of me. Though sometimes it's hard to be here with you not being here, I rejoice that you that place of peace where there's no fear. Heaven has become a little sweeter just because you're there. And we'll meet again in that place so bright and fair. Hallelujah. Great is your mercy towards me. Yep. Your love and kindness towards me. Jesus, your tender mercies I see. Every day after day.
I lay me down, heaven hear me now, I'm lost without a cause, after giving it my all, winter storms have come, and darkened my sun, after all that I
searching for that open door. And every road that I've taken hmm, led to my regret. And I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Nothing to do but lift my head. I look to you. After all my strength is gone, in you I can be strong, I look to you. Good evening, everyone. Um, just a quick announcement. We'll start the tributes in a minute. But if you're driving a green Lincoln and you're blocking the driveway, can you move it, please? Thank you. If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain Is a place for people like you if you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you 
Good evening to everyone. All right, so for these next few moments, anyone who would like to do a tribute, uh, you have this time now to, to come forward and to offer that tribute.
Since no one is getting up, I'll just briefly mm. read this um, that was sent to my aunt and my cousin from their church, to Aileen and Cabrera Marshall and family. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in heavens. That's 2 Corinthians 5.1. We, Mount Maria, a church family regrets to hear of the passing of your beloved mother, grandmother, Isola Marshall Brown. As we share with you this time of earthly sorrow, we rejoice in the word of the Lord, which declares that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We thank God for the Holy Spirit who will continue to keep you and comfort you during this time. We know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Please know that we are praying for you and the family. Done in Hope, Robert R. Lowe and Mount Maria AME Church. I also have another one. one who feels beautifully and loved freely. She was both soft and powerful. She was a strong woman, a gift to the world. In times of sorrow, love healed. In all times, love remained. It is hard to say goodbye. Our hearts are like ticking clocks. Her time has come to leave this world, but that is just when memories start until we meet again.
going to do the beginning of the show just in a little bit while they're closing up the casket. I am Slight misunderstanding. I'm going to read this um, tribute on behalf of my cousin Samantha, who is not here because she's ill. And after that, my cousin Randy is going to um, lead us in a song service. What is Isola? By English definition, Isola is a piece of land surrounded by water, feminine in nature, of earth and water. In Yoruba, bringer of wealth. My grandmother was every bit of her name. She brought wealth to her family and respect. She loved fiercely, fiery like the volcano that creates an island, a new home old home and future home to all. My grandma is, was, and will always be a home. Someone you can run to, count on, lean on, and feel safe with in the midst of emotional chaos, also referred as deep blue ocean waters. Which was her favorite color? Blue, as you see I'm wearing. Those who know, no. Now, my grandmother was known well for her fashion. She loved to get dressed for an event, church, or just being home. She loved feeling pretty. <laughs> or as, he, as she told me, she was hot. That's with two T's. <laughs> First impressions mattered to her but she always told me things would reveal itself in time. She took pride in herself because she knew if you look good, you felt good. She always shared fashion tips and clothes with me as I loved going through her closet whenever I was at her home. I saw it as an adventure and also she did not have any cable. <laughs> It was a great way to spend the past time. She stood alone as a force, but she knew that it was more beneficial to be stronger together. In her last days, she called for home, peace, and everyone to be together. Her wish was and will be fulfilled. We will continue to honor that. I was fortunate to have experienced a home that supported, cared for, fed, and loved me. I hope she understood how much I love her. To be loved by her was beyond wealth. It's transformational, as was our island girl. I wish and urge every one of my relatives here that was touched by her, people who knew her and even heard of her, carry on her life, legacy, and lesson, because I know I will. Samantha Fraser.
get you guys in a celebration mode because, as you know, my grandmothers love music. We're going to take this time to do a little song service, three hymns. I believe the lyrics will be coming up on the screen. So, first song is I'll Fly Away, the first hymn.
doing that, please check your phones, make sure they're on silent so that we'll have no interruptions from phone calls during uh, this celebration of life.
you have been in our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord the Lord. He is my dwelling place. You will keep in perfect peace all of those whose minds are steadfast because we love you and we trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord is the rock eternal. tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his hands and carries them close to his heart. At this time, let us begin our opening hymn. Precious Lord, take my hand that you remain standing with the exception of the immediate family. Good afternoon to everyone. Today, as we celebrate here today, we're not here for death. I wanted to 
understand that. Amen. 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 We're here to celebrate a life. Yes. A life lived fully. And so we're here to celebrate our mother, our friend, our aunt. I mean, she has been everything. And so we're going to pray. You know, one would uh, have hard pressed to find stronger words of comfort than those found in Psalm 46. And they might be familiar to many of us. These words were written long ago provide a sense of security to troubled times and even moments such as these. We have come to this place today for a very important purpose that we might openly acknowledge our love uh, for a very special person, our mother, our friend, our grandmother. She has been so much to so many of us. We have also come together to openly acknowledge our support for this family. We're all here today to let you know we love you. We appreciate you. We support you. For your loss, for your pain, we can offer no quick remedies or answers. Only our concerns, our thoughts, and our prayers. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you. Father God, we praise you, O oh God. We honor your holy name. Father God, we just want to thank you, O oh God, for the life of our mother today. Father God, you know she has lived a long life. A life of longevity, O oh God. A life of love, a life of grace, a life of peace. And so today, we bring her entire family before you, O oh God. Her sons, O oh God. Her daughters, her granddaughters her great-grandchildren, her friends, oh God, her relatives. Father God, everyone who's connected to her in some way, oh God, we bring them before you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we pray a prayer of comfort. Father God, we pray a prayer of peace. Father God, we pray, oh God, in the times when they do not understand, oh God, when they wake up in the middle of the night and realize, God, their mother's gone, God, you will be their comfort, oh God. You will be their peace, oh God. Father God, you'll embrace them, oh God, with your loving kindness, with your tender mercies, oh God. Father God, you'll hold them, oh God. Father God, you'll be their understanding, oh God. In the middle of the night, God, when the tears come, God, and you reach for that phone, and their mother is not there, God, I pray. You will comfort them, oh God. You will give them peace, God. You will give them understanding, oh God. Father God, I bring them before you, God. I pray you'll bind them together in love that cannot be broken, God. That will follow the footsteps of their mother, God. Of their grandmother who has been there, God. She has been the mentor of this family for so many years, oh God. And Lord, we ask, God, that you will grant them your peace, God. Whatever they have to do, God, in their extended journey to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, to lay her to rest, God, I pray you provide for them in a mighty way. God, everything that they will need, God, you will lead them, oh God, direct them, oh God. Father God, I pray, Lord, you will release your extended arms around them, oh God. Keep them together, God, and keep them safe. For these blessings, oh God, we give you thanks. Father God, we ask you to comfort them, oh God. Comfort their hearts, oh God. Let them find love, God. Let them find peace, oh God. In the name of Jesus, and God, for everyone who's here to show their love and support, I pray for a special blessing. Bless them, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. For these blessings, oh God, we say thank you. Thank you for the life of Mama, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for life well lived, God. Thank you, oh God, that now that you're taking her to your eternal rest, that you rest in eternal peace. As we celebrate her life, oh God, we give you thanks. that need to attend to it immediately. You're blocking someone's path, uh, driveway. If you have a path, Pathfinder CZB5172. Attend to your vehicle immediately. We don't want you to get towed. You're blocking someone's driveway. Also, if you have a Milano DAP96I0, attend to your vehicle immediately. We don't want you to be towed away.
Okay, at this time, we would have a scripture reading by Duan Marshall Anderson, who is a great grandson. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 through 8. not here at this time, so I guess that's what the master of sermon does. <laughs> so Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 through 8. Hear the word of the Lord. For everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. We'll also have second scripture reading, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13 through 18, by Anika Marcel Bob, granddaughter. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so, we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Amen. Amen. Music is the expression of the soul. And this time we would sing a hymn, How Great Thou Art. Isn't God great? Let's sing together how great thou art. We'll ask those who are, who are physically able to be stand to stand without, with the exception of the media family. 
If you're physically able, please stand at this time with the exception of the immediate family.
the name of the Lord. Yeah. You sound good. Yeah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And this is not a sad occasion. Because we don't sorrow as do others. But we have hope. We have hope. Hope in Christ. And so we can sing. And we can rejoice. Yes, weeping may enjoy for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Comes in the morning. And so I want you to, to experience and to, you know, the joy that, that, that my grandmother brought us. She brought us joy. And so we'll have a musical tribute by Erwin uh, Flantis Edwards from Ninja Band International. was refreshing, Plantis. I don't know if you know, but that's my favorite uh, instrument. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite instrument, the saxophone. <clears throat> we will uh, now have a reading, scripture reading, Psalm 91, by Calvin Marshall, grandson.
Okay, beginning the 91st Psalm, Psalms of David. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, we will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly, deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinion, and under his wing you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of night, or the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that stalk in darkness, or destruction that waits at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angel concerning to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample under your foot. Those who love me I will deliver, I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble, I will rescue them and honor them. With long life I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. These ended the 91st Psalms, the Psalms of David. Amen. God has wonderful promises for us in his word. And it would do well for us to, to take heed. Granny is now resting, but we have our lives to live. And we are to consider while we're yet alive, how we shall live. For one day, if we live long enough, we shall die. At this moment, we'll have <coughs> a special reflection by Dr. Nelson King, who's a longtime family friend. Good afternoon, church. Yes, it's still afternoon. It's not six o'clock yet, right? Okay. God is good? All the time. And all the time, God is good. It's really an honor and a privilege to come to give a brief tribute to who I call my home girl. Right? Now, it seems as though this is the season for death. But as we know, we can die the next second. So it tells us about our own immortality. Um, we had this week a lawyer calling Liverpool from St. Vincent Grannies who went to the Great Beyond. We came from the Bronx this morning for a funeral for a dear friend of ours whose husband passed. And seems as though death is obviously inevitable. So at some point, we're going to go. So it tells us that we just got to live good in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, I saw that was from a tongue in St. Vincent de Grenadines in North Leeward that is called Chateau Belay. How many of you from Chateau Belay? Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Put your hand up. We are very proud people, aren't we? So Chateaublay is a French for castle of good air. I'm not saying that the other tongues are not good or the other villages are not good. I could only speak for Chateaublay, where I'm from, Isola is from, our family is from, and some of us is from. Now, Isola grew up in the church. Her mother 
sister, we call her Sister Dorothy, was what we call a church nanny. You guys remember that term, a church nanny? Pastor, are the pastors here? Church nanny is somebody who's really, somebody who does everything for the church. And I'm pretty sure if you look around in the choir, you have a few church nannies right here for anymore. It's not a pejorative word, it's a, it's a good term, it's a good thing. And so Sister Dorothy actually raised Isola and her children in the church, in Chateaubriand Methodist Church, which I was a member. I grew up in the Chateaubriand Methodist Church as well, so that's why. And in Chateaubriand, you have to know everybody. Everybody knows everybody's business. As a matter of fact, a minister in the church, isn't that right, Janelle? You know I'm speaking the truth up in here. As a matter of fact, there's a, a young minister who came from Nevis, his first station when he graduated from the University of the West Indies in Jamaica. Was, um, he was in Guyana, so he married to a Guyanese, so in the Guyanese, came to Simiso, and Isola and her mother befriended the Reverend Mo. I'm not sure if Mrs. Mo is here. She told me she was going to come. I'm not sure. Oh, she's here, Mrs. Moore? So, right. But, but anyway, Reverend Moore and Sister Dorothy, the church nanny, they, they really grew a close relationship. And the children and the grandchildren was very, very close to that church. Now, I saw that was very stylistic, if I may say, uh, to use a current term, fashionista or fashionista. So when she walks, she walk in style, <laughs> and she bump and you know what. Now, one of her children, um, the first one, well, the first daughter who taught with me at the Chapelet Methodist School when I came out of secondary school, adopted her style as well. And I taught two of Isola's children. I taught Donald, and Aileen, yeah. And when they get licks, they used to throw stone after me. <laughs> but, and Aileen, when she got licks because she failed a math test or English test, she will scream for the whole top of the, and the school will be silent. But anyway, that doesn't take away from the fact that Isola and her mother nurtured those children very well. I still, by the way, work close to the Chateaubriand Methodist School um, with a guy who actually worked in the oil fields in Aruba and returned to St. Vincent again, and he's Mr. Rodwell Garden, right? And then I also taught I still as two children at the P.T. Border Secondary School. No, I still have migrated to the United States and she after a while, she took her children with her. She sent four children and they came here. And when I came to Fenimore United Methodist Church almost a quarter century ago, I met Isola here. And so we linked up. She always asked about my mom and how things were going and how the family and all that. But Isola feared God. God was first and foremost in her life. And the Moore family, which we got close to, who lived in Harlem at the time, and the Marshall family, they were just one as one unit. Now, I still live a good life for 95 years. How many of us think we're going to live to reach 95? People are dying like flies these days much less to reach 95. My mother lived until she was 93. I still live 95, and her mother also lived for 95 years old. Yeah, so I, it's, not also, it's not only in the genes, you know, it's only because we came from Chateaubriand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so in Chateaubriand, we had the, we had the dashin, and the green banana, and the ripe planting, right? And the Jibby. Somebody's saying they got that to in Chumoka. <laughs> right? And I, I saw that her mom lived close to the sea. 
a place called Corner Bay, right? So you know where you get the fish from the, the fish from the, and the yam and the jabe straight into the pot. So that contributed to her longevity. Amen? Amen. So, yes, I know Chumoka and Spring Village and all the other places in Sydney so you have Jibi and Yam, but I think that Shatterbury had the best. Amen. <laughs> and that is why I sold a live for 90. Yes, you could clap. Yeah. And that is why I sold a live to be, besides the jeans, 95 years old. No, her granddaughter, Janelle, she used to be a soulless writer at Fenmo. So, Janelle, Janelle, I'm inviting using this pulpit now to invite you back to Fenimo to be our another soloist, right? I know you're going to honor that. We need you here, Fenimo. And she sang almost every Sunday um, right before us. Okay. No, I still live a good life. She was very caring. Um, she was a sweet lady, very God fearing. And as Matthew 25 says, no good and faithful servant. She has done her part, and she is now in peace with God. And the family can take comfort from the fact that she did all that she, do, that she had to do, and now she can rest in peace eternally. Thank you so much. We did share. We shared the fresh air with everybody else, so don't worry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> at this time, we will have a special song by Stepping Stone teachers and staff. So we would invite them to come and give us their special song at this time. I guess it's still afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, yeah, five minutes. To okay, I am Mrs. Warren from Stepping Stone School in grade four. Unfortunately, we are not on the program, so I'm going to just spend a few minutes saying briefly why we're here, because we are from Queens. Okay, I met Aileen and her brother um, when they both came to um, Niger. When they both came Stepping Stone to register. Of course, you know who they are. Their children, Cabrera and Des Desron. And they're both grown adults now. And since we met, I met Aileen Marshall, um, we've never parted company. They're always at Stepping Stone. Cabrera, is that true? Yes. yes. And of course, Miss Marshall always um, is with us. And so we're here because I gradually met other members of the family, and I also met um, her mother eventually, and I remember two special occasions at which I was fortunate to attend, and I think that was a very important milestone. I think it was on 90th birthday, and I, I just saw strength in this lady. I saw lots of similarity with myself, and again, um, I saw her again when I think Cabria was awarded a scholarship from my alumni organization, and she was there. And it was so funny. I mean, she lighted up the, um, the event because even though she came in with a cane, she had a good time, and she came on the floor, and we just surrounded her and enjoyed her because, I mean, it inspired us that later on we can continue to live and enjoy life. So these are a group of, um, a number of my teachers who are here, and the previous speaker said that, um, said some good things about her, and that's why they're gonna be singing. There's a place up there for people like her, for me, and for everyone here. Thank you very much. <laughs> If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more 
Stand up, put those down on your knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you Thank you very much, Stepping Stone. Now we live in in modern times. <laughs> yes, and everybody is now you know able to be in the place that they want to be at a time. But technology has afforded us the, you know, the opportunity to, to be there even though we're not there. And so now we would have a special reflection virtually by Dr. Kenneth Williams, who is a cousin. My name is Dr. Kenneth Williams. And on behalf of my siblings and myself, I pay tribute to a very dear relative, Isola Marshall Brown. For we are deeply saddened by her passing, having achieved an enviable milestone of 95 years, and uh, we are grateful to have had her in our lives. 
Isola's physical earthly journey has ended. Spiritually, however, she remains with us. To the family, she is now in the presence of her ancestors as a new birth, welcomed and received with love and embraced to be guided through the next phase of her universal journey. Here on earth, we were all part of her physical journey. Anyone in Isola's sphere of influence felt the love and caring that she imparted during her life here on earth. I am here today representing the Williams family, Emily's family, my sister Marjorie, my brothers Corvo, Stanley, Douglas and Emil. We have all known Isola all of our lives. Our mother saw to it. Mommy had a few people that she would embrace and allow into her family. Isola was one of them. Some of our best memories as kids was when Isola came to spend time with us at her house in Babu and brought her kids. That generation knew the true meaning of family and it seemed as if Isola and my mother were kindred spirits. As cousins, they enjoyed a deep friendship and sisterly bond. So there is no doubt in my mind and my mother and all the ancestors were preparing to welcome and receive her. She gave everyone enough time to prepare for this earthly physical transition to the spiritual realm. This is one of Isola's characteristics, a very considerate human being. She always thought of others and was willing to sacrifice to help. Isola, we are saddened by the fact that your early journey is over because we would miss your physical presence and the ability to see and communicate with you on earthly terms. We take joy and solace, however, knowing that you have gone ahead to prepare for all of us when eventually we make the transition. At some point in time, all our journeys on earth come to an end. During our presence here, we accept and are given certain responsibilities to prepare us for the next phase. Isola executed hers very well. Her children, her family, and all the values she conveyed to them are testimony to the fact that she did an excellent job. These values will be on earth until eternity. Her strength of character, her mental and physical strength would serve as examples for everyone she's touched to follow. She was a free spirit who enjoyed life to the fullest. And she accepted life's challenges and joys with good humor and grace, living it on her own terms to whatever extent possible. On a more personal note, I and my family would miss your conversations. It seemed as if you always thought of us. You always checked on Emily's kids. I hope you knew how much we appreciated you. We are glad that we met you and that we were exposed to you and that we were part of our journey here on Earth. Our exposure to you helped us to understand the meaning of love. You were used as a vessel of love to share love and help others understand what love truly means. You did a good job. And now, at this time, this space, when we have lost someone who has always been very dear to us, who touched our lives in so many ways, we are much better for it. She will be greatly missed. And now she joins the ancestors in the pilgrimage to keep us grounded in values that they've passed on to us. As we mourn her passing, 
May her life be an example to those of us who are left behind to answer the call of the ages and continue to share that fellowship that is deeply rooted in our being and expressed in this verse of the poem, The Endless Landscape of Time. They came to show us the way, to meld into the legacy that we are today. The stories that imply a past, present, and a future recognize the imagery that exemplifies a cultural and spiritual life. So long, Isola, on behalf of all of us, until we meet again. Thank you. granddaughter to give us a poem if tomorrow starts without me. If tomorrow starts without me. If tomorrow starts without me and I'm not here to see, if the sun should rise and you find your eyes are filled with tears for me. I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today while thinking of the many things we didn't get to say. I know how much you love me and as much as I love you, and each time that you think of me, I know you'll miss me too. But when tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand. He said my place was ready in heaven far above and that I have to leave behind all those that I dearly love. But as soon as I turned and walked away, a tear fell from my eye. For all my life, I have always thought I didn't want to die. I had so much to live for, so much left yet to do. It seemed almost impossible that I was leaving you. I thought of all the yesterdays, the good ones and the bad. I thought of all the love we shared and all the fun we had. If I couldn't relive yesterday, just even for a while, I'll say goodbye and kiss you all and maybe see you smile. But then I fully realized that this could never be, for emptiness and memories would take the place of me. But when I thought of worldly things I might miss come tomorrow, I thought of you and when I did, my heart was filled with sorrow. When I walked through heaven's gates, I felt so much at home. God looked down and smiled on me from his great golden throne. He said, this is eternity and, and all I've promised you. Today your life on earth has passed, but here life starts anew. I promise no tomorrow, but today will always last. And since each day is the same, there is no longing for the past. You have been so faithful, so trusting, and so true. You have been forgiven, and now at last you're free. So won't you come and take my hand and share my life with me? So when tomorrow starts without me, don't think we're far apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right here in your heart. That's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hmm. Isola Escalita Marshall, also known as Isola Brown and Isola Butte, or Granny, was born on December 12, 1927, in the village of, yes, you guessed it, Chateau Belair. <laughs> Chateau Belair, St. Vincent. <laughs> to parents Dorothy Butte, Butte and William Donald Marshall. Both are now deceased. 
she spent her early childhood years with her parental great grandmother, Ba, as she was affectionately called, along with her father and, her, and his siblings. She attended the Chateaubriand Primary School and obtained her secondary education via a charter school located in Trimaca. Right, so you see, we did share with Chumaka. <coughs> While she was growing up, most of her relatives migrated to, migrated to the USA, where we are now. Amongst them, her father, Donald, aunts, Ina, and Doris, Marcel, whom she was very close to. Her uncle, Darwin, did not go to the US, he moved to Trinidad instead. I saw eventually, was eventually, sorry, the only one of our original household uh, which she was raised in, left in the US, and now resided with her mother, Dorothy, in Carnaby, lovely Carnaby. I saw land her first offspring had her first offspring at age 21 and give birth to eight children in total, three girls and five boys. Her fourth child, Garfield, died at the age of four from some undiagnosed illness. During that time, she worked very hard to cultivate the family land in Tuscany, which allowed her to take care of her mother and children. As a young mother, and constituent of Chateaulet, she also took on an interest in politics and became a community activist, and also join, joined the local town board. In 1971, Isola traveled to the United States with her eldest son, Gilbert. While visiting the US and vacationing with her son, she decided that she would not uh, he decided that he would return um, without her for she was now going to make the U.S. her home. She was going to migrate fully. <coughs> she was now reunited with her father, Donald, aunts and uncle, who had previously migrated and was now introduced to her only sister sibling, Patricia. I saw her got married to her now deceased husband, Motley Brown, in July 24th, 1980. But she continued to provide for her children who were left in St. Vincent under the care of her mom, Dorothy. In pursuit of a better life for her family, Isola worked in healthcare as a home health aide and under private um, contracts and soon was able to migrate her six children to the US. The eldest Gilbert followed his own path and landed on the shores of Grenada eventually. Once Isola, was reunited with her children, they all reside in the state of New York as they, she enjoyed her, the company of her children and grandchildren. In the 90s, Isola joined the Fenimore United Methodist Church where she remained an active member until she became ill. Isola was a strong, independent, God-fearing woman of great faith. She was a firm believer in speaking the truth and always encouraged all her children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren to get a good education. In 2017, family and friends got together and celebrated her 90th birthday milestone. That was a celebration. That day was one of mixed emotions and she definitely felt the love 
and was reminded of how much she meant to so many people whose lives she had touched over the years. Her biggest enjoyment was dancing, believe it or not. She was the life of any party. That's the truth. When she started busting out her moves, <laughs> sorry, I, I wouldn't say it like that. I mean, I would say it with a little more. When she began to, no, busting out her moves. <laughs> Uh, even at her most recent 95th birthday celebration, she can be seen dancing in her wheelchair with loved ones by her side. Uh, so, At one point, Granny came home to visit, and, and if you know anything about growing up in, in the Caribbean, in St. Vincent, any the, I guess any of the West Indian Islands, yeah, we, we, we ride on the back of pickups, or we rode on the back of pickups. Any, anybody know that? Yeah. All right, good. And it was always a, a joyous feeling to, to have barrels from overseas. That's what we call it, overseas. <laughs> and at this time when she came home, we had a, a family friend, Mr. Jones, who we would visit you know, quite frequently because we, we lived with, with her mother, which we call Ma. No, you have to say it like that. You can't, you can't say it any other way. Not mama. Ma. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. And that day, I mean, every time Mr. Jones would come, we, that is myself and Janelle, <laughs> would always climb into the back of the pickup and play while, you know, the grown-ups are inside talking. And when he comes out and drives, we'll you know, take a little ride and then just hop off as he's turning the corner. That was fun. This particular time, Granny was at home. She had you know, recently came back and they were going to, to Kingstown to do some, some business to get barrels. <laughs> and so we were outside playing in the back of the pickup. And... When it was time for them to go, they came and they, we, we ducked down in the pickup and they came and they went in. And, you know, usually we would, we would sit on the back of the pickup and as soon as he, you know, because he has to slow down to go around the corner, we would just hop off. This particular time, somebody decided to do <laughs> what was not customary for us to do. She went against the script. Or oh, did I say she? I'm sorry. <laughs> and so she went all the way up in the pickup. And so when we when he when the Jeep, the, the pickup turned the corner, I hopped off and I'm looking for Janelle. And then she looked back and saw that I had hopped off. Now this is not about us, this is about Granny, I'm telling you. So so <laughs> She looked back and, and saw that I had hopped off and became scared. Now, they don't know that we were on the back. So now the pickup is, you know, is picking up speed. And she jumped. She jumped. Long story short, you know, she had a visit to the hospital. But, but, when... When Granny got home, what do you think happened? <laughs> yes, you guessed it. I got licked. <laughs> 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 
Now, that taught me a very important lesson because I'm elder than Janelle. That taught me a very important lesson that what you do, what you do influence others and you're responsible for your actions that influence others. Of course, at that time, I didn't analyze all that. I was just worried about my, yeah. But even then, I mean, and I'm thinking that this was actually the first time that I was meeting Granny. But when it said, when it said that she, she, she believed in always speaking the truth, she believed in always speaking the truth. Somebody said that she was God-fearing. And because she was God-fearing, she did not fear man. In that sense. And I'm sure that she will be greatly missed because her life has, has touched countless people. Stepping Stone is a testament to that. And all the others who have paid their tribute. And who have come to, to give their support. So I saw the leaves to mourn sister Patricia Flood and brother-in-law Lennis Flood. Seven children. Gilbert Marcel. Grafton Marshall. Petrolin Marshall. Sydney Marshall, Donald Marshall, Aileen Marshall, Lincoln Marshall. Four daughters-in-law, Pam Marcel, Yolan Marshall, Lucine Walters Marshall, Caroline Colzak Marshall, Arnold Fraser. 20 grandchildren. Anika Marcel Bob, Orandi Marshall, Delbert Marshall, Janelle Marshall, Calvin Marshall, Michael Marshall, Sabria Marcel, Janine Marshall, Alexander Marshall, Marlon Marshall, Samantha Fraser, Jalissa Marshall Sinclair, Jamal Marshall, Alyssa Marshall, Monique Marshall, Christopher Marshall, Kyron Marshall, Cabria Marshall, Desron Marshall, Ashley Marshall. And the wives of those grandchildren that are married, Carla Marshall and Colleen Marshall and Jill, uh, Monifa, and one husband, Ina Sinclair. <clears throat> Nieces and nephews, Travis Marshall, Cassidy Flood, and Bree Flood. 14 great grandchildren. Giovanni Ferdinand, Duan Marshall Anderson, Janae Marshall, Michaela Clark, Kalia Marshall, Lance Marshall Sinclair, Leon Marshall Sinclair, <clears throat> Sin Marcel Bob, sorry, Sian Marcel Bob, <clears throat> Akai Francis, Ruben Ford, Melody Marshall, Kaje Marshall, Madeline Marshall, Nicole Marcel Bob, great nieces and nephews, Talia Flood, Eliana Flood, closest cousins, Mrs. Marjorie Coffey and Dr. Hudson Coffey, Dr. Colville Williams and Naomi Williams, Dr. Kenneth Williams and Sylvia Williams. Mr. Stacy Williams, Stanley Williams, sorry. Mr. Douglas Williams and Diane Williams. 
Mr. Emil Williams and Dr. Erica Belton Williams, Agnes Dorothy Butte Williams, Carmina Macmillan, Margaret Williams, Francis Williams, Jennifer Williams, Ray Williams, and close friend, family and friends, the Honorable Jerry Scott and family, the Kalzak family, Jacqueline Bailey and family of, of Cyan Hill, the Quow family of Barley, Finley family, Pastor Andrea Smith, the Butte family, the Adams family, David Henry, Lana and Kyle Cox, adopted daughter, Martina Dial, Sesvigi, Agatha Sandy, Sylvan Small, adopted daughter, Kendrick Phillips, Derek Early, Villa Villana, Jack, aka Chevy, <laughs> Arlene uh, Blades, aka Samantha, Carla Tennant, Stacy Nero Duncan, Dr. Lennox Adams, members of the Fenimore United Methodist Church, and Pastor Vero Blake, and members of the Bap uh, Baptist Church there. We will all miss her deeply. And may she rest in peace. This time, I call on my partner in crime. Okay, maybe not crime. <laughs> to render her musical selection. Now, this is this is a singer in the family right here. Janelle Marshall. Good evening, church. Um, real briefly, going back a little bit, I'll just like to personally acknowledge someone. Samantha, where are you? Can you stand up? Samantha. Okay. This young lady right here. Her name was mentioned, but I cannot skip over the fact that she made my grandmother's last six months seem like happy days even when she was in pain. <laughs> it was a job, but it wasn't. She became family. She was there when she didn't have to be, virtually on the phone. If her aide couldn't make it, she did a double. <laughs> and even in her final days for parties, for any type of celebration, she was there. Going into pocket, you know, it wasn't the job. It was like it was her own mother. So on behalf of myself, my aunt Aileen, and the entire family circle, we want to say we love you and thank you for taking care of Granny the way you did. Now there's another young lady who's not here, and that is Stacy. Now Stacy was more in the earlier days when she was diagnosed, but even though Stacy was not her current aide, she's still like family. Um, a no, no, I know she's here. Hold on. <laughs> I know she's here. So, Stacy, you remember when you got married? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so the thing is, normally when you invite someone to a wedding, their family gets them ready, right? Nah. <laughs> Stacy came. She got her ready, got her dress, took her to her wedding. They had fun. Of course, she stole the show. It was Stacy was the bride, but hey, <laughs> you know I stole her. <laughs> she danced, she had fun, and Stacy and her family brought her back. So these aides, Stacy, just stand up for a minute for me so I can acknowledge you. These aides became a part of our family. And there are pictures up there you'll see with them because they were part of the family. It wasn't just work. And again, Stacy, on behalf of my family and myself, thank you for loving our grandmother the way you did. Now, I came to this country in 1997. My grandmother brought me here. And the circumstances under which I got here it was funny, but it wasn't. Um, my great-grandmother, Dorothy Butte, came ahead. And because Randy and myself lived with her, but Randy had gone back to live with his mom, and I was the only one with her. And they brought her to vacation, but extended vacation. And she's like, well, I'm not staying if Janelle is not coming. <laughs> so she went back, and they're like, OK, We'll take you back and we promise we'll bring Janelle. So my grandmother came home to the SVG. We went, the Honorable Jerry Scott wrote a nice letter to the embassy. My grandmother took me to Barbados. That was the first time I was going on a plane. <laughs> it was an adventure because neither of us know where we were going. <laughs> we got lost a couple of times, but we made it to the embassy. And I got my visa, and she brought me here on March 1st, 1997. I became a part of Fannie Mae Church because she brought, she brought both me and my great-grandmother here. And you guys received us with open arms. As Dr. King mentioned earlier, I was one of the soloists here, a part of the um, fam, Fannie Mae family. That, that time it was me, Chanel, Errol, uh, I can't remember some of, um, Pastor Robert's daughter, I believe, yes. So um, I want to say thank you also to you, Fanny Moore, for loving my grandmother, even though we went on, you know, I, I should say, went on to different things. She was still here, and you guys still embraced her and kept her part of the family, so thank you. With that being said, this song that I'm about to sing is the very first song that I sang at Fanny Moore. Um, it was Granny, one of Granny's favorite songs to hear me sing. Funny thing is she never liked to hear me sing it with music. She would say, I love it when you sing it a cappella. <laughs> so the funny thing is Sister Ferguson called, well, we spoke on the day when my grandmother passed, and she's like, Janelle, are you going to sing? I said, I don't know, I'll try. Maybe I may not be strong enough, but God will give me the strength. She's like, I hope you're doing that song that we love. <laughs> I'm like, yes, that's Granny's favorite song. And coincidentally, Pastor Andrea. <laughs> yes, I'm putting people on the spot. <laughs> Requested the same song. So this song is entitled Peace in the Midst of a Storm because... You do know that in these trying times, and this is a celebration of life, but yes, my grandmother has passed and she's lived a good life, but after the burial and the phone calls and everything stopped, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> in those dark rooms when we start reminiscing, it's memories. It's good memories sometimes, but the tears will come trickling down. So family, let's just remember and ask God for peace in the midst of this storm.
listening collapses at my feet when my life is shattered and torn though I'm windswept and battered I can cling to his cross and find peace in the midst of a storm. Oh, there's peace in the midst of the storm tossed life. There's an He's my vessel, so I keep, keep holding on till he gives me peace in the midst of the storm. When 24 short hours, years living, I brought to moments and when life's final picture is taken form in the dark room of my suffering there's a light that comes shining through and gives me peace in the midst of the storm when my spirit has been broken till it's trapped by misery when the doctors shake their heads and look for long Jesus comes to make my bedside a cathedral of open love. And he gives us peace in the midst of the storm. Do you hear me now? <laughs> oh, no, there's peace. to introduce the sermon, huh? Pastor Andrea Smith. 
speak to our heart. If you know that he has been your peace in the midst of a storm, somebody open up their mouth and give God praise on this evening. If you know that he's your anchor, if you know he's your strength, if you know he's your refuge, if you know that he's your all in all, uh, somebody ought to put their hands together, open up their mouth and say, Jesus is my Lord. Come on, saints of God. It's time to celebrate on this evening because somebody might say, well, why are we happy or why are we clapping? We're happy and we're clapping because even though Sister Isola is no longer with us, she's in the best place that there ever could be. She's in the arms of her master, her savior, her friend, her companion, the one who was the lifter of her heads. Or when she was in the hospital on the bed of affliction, he was there when you weren't there. He was the one that talked to her and she talked to him. And that's why we can celebrate this evening that she's in a good place. Amen. Good evening to each and every one of you. I am Dr. Andrea Smith, and I pastor the Uniondale United Methodist Church in Long Island. But this is my home church, Fenimore Street United Methodist Church, and this is where I met Sister Isola. I called her grand because just like Janelle said, she brought her into the church. And hearing Janelle said grand, I just picked up and I said grand too. And she welcomed me and I loved her and she loved me. Uh, when I started here and began to uh, bring the word, she was a source of encouragement to me. Uh, she told me that she would pray for me and she always had something good to say. Uh, when I had my son, uh, uh, she talked about him because Timothy was chunky. And you know, you West Indians, y'all like some chunky babies. And so she always said to me what to feed him and how to take care of him and or what to do for him. And she was like a grandmother to me as well. It was my privilege and my honor to celebrate with her at her 90th birthday and to offer a word of prayer then. And even in these last days when I went to see her, because I hadn't seen her for a while, I was most surprised when I went into the bedroom. And I got close to her, and I said to her, do you know who this is? And she looked at me, and she pulled her head back. She said, Andrea? And I said, yes, Grant, it's me. Well, let me tell you, she blessed my heart when I knew that she recognized me. And so I say to the family on tonight and all of you friends who are gathered here that my condolences are with you. We know that some people like to say, oh, well, you've had her for a long time. That has nothing at all to do with anything. It is a loss. It is grief that is involved and you're going to go to the bed and she's not going to be there any long. You're going to want to pick up the phone and realize you can't call her. And so my condolences are with each and every one of you. For you 20 grandchildren, you have a responsibility because you have the legacy to continue. And I agree with what was said that she was a sharp dresser. So y'all 20, y'all got to dress sharp. Y'all got to represent don't go out there slacking because she's going to come get you. All right. So do what you have to do. Remember everything that she said to you and keep your heads up and stay connected as a family. I want to bring a brief word to you on today from the scripture that was read from Psalm 91, which is a scripture that is familiar to many of us and a source of comfort, so much so that many of you have it memorized. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, and I'm just going to read for you verses 14, 15, and 16. 14, 15, and 16 from Psalm 91. The New Living Translation says, The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. 
I want to introduce to, I want to present to some and introduce to others uh, uh, Jesus the rescuer. Jesus the rescuer. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, uh, what a privilege and an honor it is to come before you this evening. To know, O oh God, that when we come, you welcome us and you draw us in closer. So, Lord, as we come in this time to hear from you, we ask, O oh God, that you would speak. That you would speak to each one individually and to all of us corporately. That we don't leave the same way that we've come in. But we hear something that's tailor-made to our own situations. We pray, O oh God, that from this word that we will get peace and encouragement and that we will draw closer to you. This is our prayer this evening. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, our rescuer. Jesus, our rescuer. Uh, the scripture says, the Lord says, I will rescue those who love me and I will protect those who trust in my name. I want to let you know on today that even though we've gathered together today, uh, looking at the life of Sister Isola Brown, and oftentimes when you hear someone speak about grief, uh, uh, you think about death, grief and sorrow also comes in other forms. If you let go of a job, it is a death. If you lose a pet, an animal, there is grief involved. If there's a separation in a marriage, there is a sort of death. And so some of us, under the sound of my voice today, can be experiencing some sort of grief, some sort of sorrow. And I want to let you know that Jesus Christ is our all in all, and I want to introduce to you tonight that he is also your rescuer. Ah, it says to us that uh, he loves us and he will rescue those who love him. And so it has to know on today that there's a responsibility on our part. We have to find out and we have to ask ourselves the question, do I love Jesus? I'm not asking you tonight, do you love God? And the reason why is because there's many religions out there today and everybody's calling the name God. But everybody's not calling the name Jesus Christ. And so that's why I ask you this evening, do you love Jesus? Uh, if you love him, then you will call on him. And if you call him, he will respond to you. So no matter what you're going through this evening, no matter what you're experiencing, Jesus is available to rescue you. Uh, this day and age, we have what we call the GPS. And many of us depend on the GPS to travel. Uh, those of you that are Uber drivers, uh, uh, you have no fear of picking up somebody. And those of us that use Uber, we don't have any fear of getting in the car because we know that they're using GPS and we're going to get to our destination. Uh, before GPS, uh, we used to have MapQuest. How many of y'all remember MapQuest? Uh, uh huh. You would go on and put in your coordinates and where you're going and print it out, Sister Finley, and, and walk with your paper and know where you're going. Hopefully, none of you have ever had the experience like me holding the paper so tight and the window down and the paper went flying out the window. Oh, my God. I said, Lord, bring back to my remembrance what the paper said. Ah, uh, but then there's some of us that's older than the map quest, uh, that used to just drive because uh, a friend said, listen, I'm going to give you the directions. And they give you some landmarks uh, and tell you, if you get to this, then turn left. Uh, if you get to that, then turn right. Uh, and some of us would forget our left from our right. Uh, all right, don't raise your hand. Uh, and we would end up in the wrong direction. 
Uh, at that time, we had a different connection, and the connection was prayer. <laughs> we would pull off to the side of the road. We would sit there behind the wheel and say, Lord Jesus, uh, I don't know where I'm at, Lord. I done got the wrong turn. I'm in a neighborhood I don't know. Lord, please just send me a landmark. Just help me to get the direction. And all of a sudden, in your spirit, you would feel go to the left. And you drive to the left a little ways down and then stuff starts to look clear again. And stuff starts to look familiar. And then when you know where you're at, then you say, thank you, Jesus. Ah, <laughs> oh, he's our rescuer. Uh, then you have, uh, uh, when you had those days of map quests, uh, uh, you had the person that was sitting next to you in the car and they would be reading the directions to you. Uh, but then sometimes they too would get confused with their left and their right. Uh, and they would say to you, when you get to the second uh, street light, turn to your left. <laughs> you trying to drive and you looking at them, what is it you want me to do? When you get to the second street light, turn to your, right, your left. And you, what happened? You don't understand what I'm saying? When you get there, turn to your left. And you, you go on and you, you're driving, you get to the second left, you make the turn to the left. Where are you going? You said turn left. You didn't see my hand. <laughs> you see a pointing. So we know that when we get in these situations, uh, we need a rescuer. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, a rescuer. Uh, Jesus is the one that when we get in these situations where we're all confused, where we're overwhelmed and discombobulated, where people are pulling at us in every situation, pulling us here and there, we don't even know ourselves. He will rescue you. He will rescue you. He not only will rescue us, uh, but he will protect you. Uh, somebody say protect. He will protect us. Uh, but then again, there's a requirement on our part. Uh, we have to put our trust as believers. We will ask somebody, oh, do you trust the Lord? Oh, yes. I trust God. You know, the voice gets deep. It gets very serious. Uh, yes, I trust God. But let a situation come and ravage us. Uh, we can't sleep at night. We start losing weight. The gray hairs start popping up on our heads. And somebody comes along and says to you, Oh, my brother, how you feeling? My sister, how you doing? And we say, Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. Oh, we got all the proper words to say. But in the inside, we are all messed up. Uh huh. Some of us as ladies, uh, uh, we take time and we put the makeup on our face. We put the foundation on and the lipstick. See, I can't do that. That's why I got my rag. Uh huh. Because I'm in that season. The ladies know what I'm talking about. And, and they put on their lashes and they're looking good. And you have gotten caught up in that face so much, you don't even know what you look like yourself. My God, my God. But if we trust Him, we we will depend on him. If we trust him, we will rely on him. We'll be able to put our heads down to sleep at night and we'll be able to rest. I'm not saying that everything will be in order. I'm not saying that we have the plan all figured out. Uh, but then we know that there's one who is greater than I that knows our beginning from our end and it is in him that we are relying on. We're not relying in our own strength. We're not relying in our own knowledge. Because uh, I know some of you are very bright. You know West Indians like to say bright. They don't say smart. They say bright. Uh -huh. And you know you're very, very bright. Uh, uh, but we don't know everything. You ain't got to shake your head. I, I admit it for myself. I don't know everything. I'm Dr. Smith and I still don't know everything. But I know somebody that knows everything. Ah, So I don't have to depend on my own self. I can rest in him. So we're trying to navigate this sorrow. We're trying to navigate life. Uh, we thought that uh, uh, when we began to save, you know, and, and, and put the money in the bank. Uh huh. And Reverend Jackson, uh, they they like the bank. They're not happy these days because everything is 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 paperless. 
Uh, but the old days, we used to have a bank book. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the bank book used to have a distinct color. Uh, some of them were red. Some of them were gold. And the bank book used to be in the corner dresser next to the bed. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm looking down for a reason because I don't want y'all to say I'm picking on y'all. Uh huh. And so the bank book used to stay there. Uh -huh, I'm going to teach you something because uh, when they get up in the middle of the night and they get a little worried, what brought them comfort was to look in the bank book. Okay. All right. Uh huh. And they like to go to the bank. Uh, didn't mind how long you wait online. You give them your bank book and they used to put the interest on it. Am I talking right? Okay. Uh-huh. And you used to come out the bank uh, looking happy because interest was added on. Uh -huh. And then we put our trust in that. Uh-huh. We put our trust in the money. All right. Then we came over from the islands. Uh, we lived with family a little while. Uh, we got a job. We were able to set some money aside. And then we bought our own house. And we said when we were buying the house, it was a family house. Uh-huh, but you had to call me before you come. <laughs> Don't come ring at my door. And you didn't call me ahead of time to let me know that you was coming. Uh-huh, listen, I know I'm stepping on somebody's shoes. Just say, ouch, but keep looking at me. Because if you look down, we know we're talking about you. Okay. Uh-huh. And, and, and we put our trust in the home. Uh-huh. Some of us got the latest car. And we was out there as soon as it stopped raining. We took our rag. And we're wiping it down. So the men, men, keep your heads up. Don't put your head down, man. And you're wiping down the car to make sure there's no spots on the car. We were the first one in line at the car wash. We put our trust in the car. Oh, we put our trust in the stock market. And we realize today that none of those things are working. Because all it takes is one thing to come along and wipe that whole bank book out. One problem in the house, one problem with the plumbing, one problem with the electrical. For the street to back up and next thing you know your house is smelling like something else. To wipe out that whole bank book. So I come by today to tell you, you better put your trust in God. Ah, oh, then put it in on these, uh, these earthly things that do not matter and do not last. He is our rescuer. The scripture says to us that when they call on me, I will answer. We like the part to say that God's going to answer me. But we forget the part, we got to call him. You know, some of us have gotten into our feelings these days. And we sit at home and we wait for the phone to ring. And we get upset that nobody's calling me. We've gotten to a certain age, and so we feel because we're of this age, they ought to call me. I'm the elder. I'm the matriarch of the family. I'm the oldest uncle. They ought to call me. And we take that same attitude in our relationship with the Lord. We just think that the Lord ought to respond when we're in an emergency. Uh, because God knows everything, he just ought to fix it. Why even bother to pray? He already know. So why doesn't he take care of it? But the scripture says, when they call on me, uh, we have to open our mouths and make our requests known unto the Lord. Uh, somebody may have a problem with that, so let me give you a practical example. How many parents do I have in the house? Lord, Reverend Jackson, they don't even want to tell anybody they're a parent. Is the kids that bad? My God. Let me try that again. How many parents we got in? Oh, that's much better. That's much. Oh, we happy with them now. Glory be to God. Uh, and so as parents, we know our children. Uh, we know when they want something from us. Come on, talk back to me. That's when you don't have to ask them to take out garbage, Sister Jones. Uh -huh. You don't have to ask them to clean their room. You don't have to ask them to wash the dishes. Everything is done and taken care of because they want something from you. And you know that they want something from you. 
But you're not asking them. You're waiting for them to ask you. Uh, you could be sitting at the table, they'll walk back and forth. And you see that, but you don't acknowledge them. You keep reading the newspaper. You're looking at them, and you think they say, and we say as parents, they got to come to me. So if we say that, why isn't the Lord saying that to us when he is our heavenly father? That's why the scripture says, when they call unto me, we've got to come to the Lord. And when we come to him, he will help us. Now, there's no question of whether or not he's going to help us. He will help us. But we have to call on him. So some of you are sitting there and saying, I'm in the same situation and I can't seem to move. I've been saying the same prayer and nothing seems to happen. When last have you called on him? And when you called on him, when last have you trusted him? Because, you know, we give and take back. We give and we take back. And that's what we do with the Lord. We give him our praise. We give him our worship. We give him our request. And then when we don't see it happening the way we think it should happen, we take it back. But I'm encouraging you on this evening to give it to the Lord and leave it there. Is that what the hymn says? Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Now, when we take the burdens to the Lord and we give it to him, we got to say thank you. Well, what are we saying thank you for, Pastor? Thank you for everything else that he's already done for you. Thank you for the prayers that he answered that you even forgot about. Thank you for the many blessings that he's bestowed upon you for things you didn't even ask for. Thank him for the fact that he has protected you thus far. He has kept you from danger seen and unseen. You got to thank him because he has blessed you. I know many of you think that you got up this morning for the alarm clock. And some of you, the alarm clock didn't go off and you got up late. But you still got up. It wasn't your own doing. It's because God breathed afresh on you and allowed you to wake up this morning. That's why we have reason to say thank you. I'm going to give you another personal example. I ain't going to be long before you. Uh, but when we as parents uh, give something to our children, we're waiting for them to say, thank you. now we, we hold it <laughs> until they say it. <laughs> See? See, you see what he said? He made sure to say thank you. But if we're giving it and they don't say it, <laughs> and we say to you, learn some manners, you're not going to get it. Now, I believe that Sister Isola was of the old school like my mother. So what she would do is, He gonna regret being in the pulpit today. <laughs> so not only did you not say thank you, but you got a smack. And the smack was only whatever was closest to them. So if the hand was closest, you got it there. If the mouth was closest, you got it there. But we learned how to say thank you. I think many of us today, because God has been good to us, uh, he has rescued us from many situations, we forget to say, when last have you said thank you? And it's not only for the big, but we got to start with the small. We got to start with what he does for us on a daily basis. Y'all live in Brooklyn for those, you know that parking is ridiculous. So if you got a parking spot, you ought to say thank you. If you got a parking spot within a two-block radius, you ought to say hallelujah. <laughs> we got to start with the small things to give God thanks and praise for. 
What we can remember from Sister Isola is that she loved the Lord. When I went to see her last, we sang the hymns, and she remembered them. She was singing better than me. I had to get my phone and bring up lyrics of, and she was already singing. And it's because the relationship with her Lord and Savior was already established. It wasn't something that just happened. And we hear that from all of the reflections and the obituary and everything that she raised her children in the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord. He can be your rescuer this evening. He is available for you for whatever tight space that you are in this evening. He will be able to pull you out. He will give you a means of escape. He will give you a plan uh, that you don't have to be embarrassed, that nobody's going to laugh at you. Nobody's not even going to know because he's just that good that when we come out the storms, we don't even look like what we've been through. He perfects us and he cleans us up uh, that we don't even look like our past. And we have to understand who we are in Christ Jesus to know that we have the authority to call his name. Won't somebody call his name this evening? Even as you were saying, he was already on the scene. Some of you are thinking about some situations even now as I'm preaching, even now as I'm sharing this word with you. And I'm telling you, try him, test him, prove him, and see won't he show up. Or won't he do it for you? For that very situation that you're thinking about right now, for that very thing that's on your mind, for that hard person that's just seeming to aggravate you on your job. Some of you know about anointing stuff with oil. Don't, 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 don't anoint the seat that they go sliding out the seat now. We don't want to cause no problems. Oh, but we got to learn how to pray for our enemies. Uh, we got to learn that they're going through some situations uh, and they're just taking it out on whoever is around them. And we got to pray. Because guess what? They know that you're a believer. And sooner or later, they're going to come to you and ask you to pray for them. They're going to come to you with whatever is bothering them and ask you, can you remember them in prayer? Can you take their name to church? Uh, they're going to come to you. Let God be your rescuer today. We're going through some hard times. We've just come out of some hard times. COVID was something none of us knew about. So we couldn't train anybody else to do it. We couldn't tell anybody else how to live. But I tell you one thing that I know. Ain't nobody got to say amen to it. Nobody has to be in agreement with it. But this I know. Because of COVID... And because of restaurants shutting down. So it wasn't so quick for us to go to the corner store, uh, whether it was our favorite West Indian restaurant, whether it was our favorite fast food or Chinese or whatever the case is, it was shut down. And so I heard y'all talking about the fish. And I heard you talking about the potatoes and the edders. And I know that somebody had to go back to them days. I know somebody had to go back to learning how to cook a pot of soup uh, uh, that would last uh, more than two days. Uh, I know somebody had to learn their kitchen uh, once again. Uh, I know somebody had to learn how to turn on the burners uh, and the stove can't be as clean as you thought it was uh, because you had to learn how to cook again. I know somebody learned how to bake some bread because they found out that bread was getting very expensive. I know that somebody called up somebody else and asked them, what's that recipe that mama used to do? How do you cook some dumplings? And how do you bake some fish? And how do you do this? Because we had to go back to what we know. I know somebody picked up the word of God again. Somebody started reading scripture all over again. Somebody realized they didn't forget those hymns like they thought they did. And I'm telling you, that's our foundation. Put your feet on a firm foundation and know Jesus as your rescuer. He's available for you today. He's available for you today. All you have to do is call him. All you have to do is ask him to come in. Come in to my heart. 
Come in to my heart. Come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in, I pray. Come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. If that's your prayer, won't you sing it with me again? Come in to my heart, come in to my heart, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus, come in to I close in every head bow. Father, we call on you this night in the name of Jesus. Thanking you, God, that you are our strength and you are our refuge. Father, we lift our hands to you this day, inviting your God into our hearts once again. Father, we pray, oh God, that you would be with us, God, during these rough times. That, God, you would be with the family, God, and be with the friends, God, and be with all who will miss, God. I soul of God. Help us, God, to never forget that you are in control of it all. Help us, God, to remember, God, that it's only in you that we have our strength. And it's only in you, God, where we find refuge. So, God, if there's any among us this night, God, who do not know you in the pardoning of their sins, God, we pray, oh, God, that this would be the night when they cry out unto you, I need you. Come into my heart and stay, oh, God. We thank you, God, for the life of Isola. We thank you, God, for her legacy, God. We thank you, God, for the way in which she lived her life following after you. For, God, we know that there's no other way to live but to live by you. So, God, we pray and we thank you this night for all of that was said, all that was done, God, to remember this wonderful saint of yours, God. So, God, we know by what was done this night that her living was not in vain. So, God, be glorified, God, in us as we continue, God, to live for you. Help us, God, to always, always, always depend on you. Because you are a sure foundation. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you. Amen. As we sing, what's the next hymn? When we all get to heaven. Well, praise the Lord. That's a song that's only for the saved. If you're not saved, you won't get to heaven. Don't believe what's there, new, new theology where everybody gets in. Jesus said, that not even, don't even call me good. That only God is good. And the only way to God is through Jesus Christ. That's what we believe. You can believe what you want, but I believe in Jesus Christ. And he said, you must be saved. Otherwise, there's another place for you called hell. It's real. It's real. It's real. And no one should want to go there. Make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of life. Let us rise up with this, with the exception of the family. Let us rise up and sing this great hymn of the church. When we all get to heaven, what a day it will be.
Hallelujah. We're going to shout and we're going to sing for victory because Christ has risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord because he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We give God glory and honor. What a glorious day that will be. You don't want to miss it today in Jesus' name. You don't want to miss it. So give your life to Christ today. It's the only way you can see Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So let's uh, have the benediction. benediction now. May the grace of our Lord. Bob, can you stand, everybody, please? Let's just honor the Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. I thank you all for coming. And may the Lord just continue to raise his grace upon you, family, and be comforted in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, you may be seated for a moment as the funeral directors come down with some final instructions. We invite the funeral director to come down with some final instructions as we go through our final viewing this night. This concludes at this time the celebration of the life of our sister Isola Butte Marshall Brown. On behalf of the family, we want to thank Pastor Andrew Smith for her very cogent and timely words to us this evening. The host pastor, Reverend Jackson, for his for allowing us to be here this evening without you. We would not have been here. So thank you very much for allowing this family the opportunity to say goodbye to their loved one. And thanks also to Reverend Dr. Nell Richardson for your very cogent help and presence here this evening. Special thanks also to you, friends and loved ones, for coming out here today to be with this family in this dead time of bereavement. It is your time, and you could have choose to spend it elsewhere, but you rather choose to be here to show this family that their loved one was not only loved in life, but also in death. I could assure you that at a more opportune time when this family would have regained their composure, that they will acknowledge each and every one of you in their own special way. Interment for our sister would take place in St. Vincent and the Grenadines on April 15th. Before that, there would be another celebration. Somebody said, when it's nice, you do it twice. So there would be another celebration for our sister, Marshall Brown when they get to St. Vincent and interment would follow and at Chateaubelair. Uh, and I believe the cemetery is Fitu's Cemetery. Immediately we leave, I ask the pallbearers to 
stay back and let the others go and you are going to take the the casket out you're going to follow uh the, the the ministers okay so paul bearers immediately we finish you are going to stick come up here with me and you are going to help us to take the casket out at this time we want to afford you a chance to view the house in which our sister once lived please remain in your seat the ushers are going to direct you and i want to say a very special thanks for the ushers because they make my work much more lighter and easier so thank you and for the musicians as well thank you for your accompaniment god bless you so please remain in your seat the ushers will direct you accordingly when Amen. you come up please Please, when you come up, please be mindful of those who are bef behind you. So, greet the family briefly and keep the line going. All right? I don't want to have to ask anybody to keep going. Thanks a lot. God bless you. Amen. I, I, I neglected. I skipped over the family acknowledgments. If you want to do that, if you want to keep it brief, we can do that now. Here's the down here. It has family acknowledgments. I want to give you an opportunity to do that since we couldn't get the program. It's all right if you don't. I just want to make sure that we didn't leave out something that you wanted to do. I am I am Petro Marshall, the daughter of Isola Marshall, and on her behalf and the um, rest of the family, I would like to thank all who are here who came to be with us in our time of grief and bereavement. I would like to say thank you very much for leaving your home, for coming here to represent her and to give her the honor that is due to her because my mother have been so good and wonderful, believe in the Lord. She taught us and how to accept and do the things that God wants us. And right now, I am going to say thank you very much for coming, each and every one. Thank you. Good afternoon, saints of God, people of God. On behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Roger Jackson, officers and members of this great church, we want to take this opportunity to wish you Janelle, fam members of Isola Brown. I pray that God continue to give you strength during your mourning and your loss. And I pray that you just lift to give your, pray your praise to God during the time of your bereavement. We know that it, it will be hard, as uh, the gentleman said, in the midnight hours when there's no one to call to. I'm sure you know that you can call on God. Amen? So we are with you. If there's anything that we can do for you, we know we can pray for you and with you. But if there's any other thing that we can do for you, please don't hesitate to call us at Fenimore. Another thing. Will the members of United Women of Faith please stand? Sister Isola Brown was an active member of the United Women of Faith, and on behalf of the United Women of Faith of this church again, we want to say to you, Janelle, and all the members of Isola Brown, we wish you peace, comfort, 
during this time of your bereavement. She was an active member before she became ill. So God bless you. God continue to wrap his loving arms around you in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, United Women of Faith. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Please follow the direction of the ushers as we come forward for final viewing at this time. Thank you. 
saints, saints, saints of God, we, we need to, we need to, we need to, the Paul barriers to help. We need the Paul barriers and we also need to start clearing out the sanctuary. The family, the family can follow behind the casket. And for everyone else, we really do need you to start clearing out of this sanctuary. The family can follow behind the casket. We need Paul Barris and the family can follow behind the casket. And everyone else we really do need. God be bless your name. Go ahead and bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Watch your back, please, King. Watch, please. Father, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch your back, please. Watch your back, please. Watch your back. Gotta clear the steps. Please clear the steps.